Hello, I'm Tex Andrews with the Light Zone Project, and this is a very brief overview of the Light Zone photo editing software program. Light Zone was created in 2005 and 6 by Fabio Riccardi and sold by the Lightcrafts Company until September of 2011 when the company went out of business. Doug Pardee and I then started a small website to offer support to the existing user community. We've grown over time. In the fall of 2012, Fabio very generously donated the source code for LightZone to us, and we have developed an open source project to keep the program alive. And we are offering it now in Mac, Windows, and Linux operating systems free of charge to the public. LightZone is an interesting photo editor and software program. The browser module, which we are in right now, looks very similar to other browser modules. There is a separate video about this browser module, so I'm not going to go into much detail about it now, except to say that this area here represents the folder tree on your computer. LightZone is not a fully fledged digital asset management program. If you need that kind of power, you need to look elsewhere from LightZone. LightZone's best things are actually in its editor module. Nevertheless, the browser does offer some nice features and allows you to batch process. Let's move over to the editor module. And you'll see one of the key features of LightZone is that it is, has a very simple, clean, graphical user interface. This is a raw image and only two raw tools are shown here. That's because the these two, two tools only do a slight bit of conversion and when you want to do more editing you add more tools. The tools aren't automatically rolled out into this area here which we call the tool stack. I'll talk about that in a moment but let's bring up something from the help files and talk about some important aspects of LightZone. LightZone is a completely non-destructive editor. When you import photos into LightZone to edit either TIFFs or JPEGs or RAWs, you edit them in LightZone and then LightZone creates a sidecar file that contains the edits you have done plus a small preview file. And if you are printing out of LightZone, you can go directly to your printer, but if you want to use your images in another program, then you export them and convert them into TIFFs or JPEGs of the appropriate size. There's more on this on the two separate videos about saving and converting in LightZone, but this is one of the ways that LightZone achieves. It's totally non-destructive editing. Your originals are never touched. The tools in LightZone are organized in something called a tool stack. There is a separate tool stack video. The tool stack is very flexible in that as you apply your tools, each tool is its own layer, so you're not applying uh, sharpening, for instance, to a particular layer. The other interesting thing about the tool stack is that you can reorganize it in terms of its order, and that sometimes makes a difference in how the editing goes with your image. LightZone is a raw conversion program, and we are trying to keep up as best we can with all new camera models and their raw profiles. As a project, the LightZone project is a little bit unique, we think, in that we have provided a way for users to create their own raw profiles or modify the ones that we have provided. Uh, again, that is, we think, a little bit unique in the industry. Throughout the editing process, LightZone works in a 16-bit color space. It's similar to ProPhoto RGB, so it's quite a wide gamut. It never drops out of this, like some programs, you'll use a tool and actually suddenly you're working in 8-bit. No, LightZone is always 16-bit linear color space. LightZone also gives you the ability to do selective editing. It was one of the first programs to allow you to do that, and it uses vector-based regions and masks to do this. There's a separate video on that, but it means that quickly you can edit only a portion of your image using one of these masks, the tool can apply only to this one section. Or you can protect a section from being affected by a tool by inverting the mask. LightZone also includes a couple 
three unique tools. The Zone Finder and Zone Mapper tool work with one another, and they're based on the Zone system. There's a separate video on these. The Relight tool is a tone mapping tool and enables you, along with the Zone Mapper and Zone Finder, to do some really sophisticated tone mapping in your image without resorting to multi-image HDR techniques. In LightZone, you are doing that with only a single image, and it's very, very powerful. You may find that you get as much out of a single image in LightZone as you have been getting with HDR programs, and your results may look more natural at the end of it. Many of you know that HDR programs, uh, if not handled carefully, can give a strange, surreal look, which maybe you're looking for, but if you're not, it can be problematic. LightZone gives you the ability to do these things very naturally with a single image. They're also, by the way, these tools are great for black and white conversions. So that's a brief overview of LightZone and some highlights some of the special features of it. One thing we'd like to say also, just as LightZone is not a complete digital asset manager, it is also not a total graphics program like something, say, Photoshop or Paint Shop Pro or Painter. Um, these programs are really graphical programs. Uh, Photoshop, some of us think, has a rather unfortunate name that really ought to be called Graphics Shop because that's what it is. It's a big, sophisticated program that allows you to do almost anything to your image. Instead, think of LightZone as a tool for straight photography. You can get some very unusual effects in LightZone if you look into the blend modes and, and do strange things with your editing. But fundamentally, it's about straight photography with single images. You cannot cut a sky from one image and add it to another in LightZone because it does not composite. So once again, within its limits, it's a wonderful program and it has tremendous power but it is not a replacement for a full-fledged digital asset manager or for a full-fledged graphics program like Photoshop. So give us a try. We hope you enjoy the program. Please look at the other videos because they go into the actual features of the program in more detail.